Torah portion this week is Vayigash, which means he drew near or approach. It's found in Genesis chapter 44, verse 18 to Genesis 47, verse 27. The Haftarah portion is in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15 to 28. Wait a minute. that I have is John chapter well, Luke chapter 6 here verse 6 to 49 well we'll see in that. okay now we'll start out with the pictograms and the gematria and the word Vayigash first we have the letter Vav which is the number 6 which represents a man right mm -hmm. and we have the peg and the nail again and that refers back to scriptures that we've gone over several times in Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53. It talks about the suffering Messiah, Mashiach ben Yosef. And also you'll find the New Testament, the Brit HaDashah fulfillment of that in Matthew 28 and all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The next letter we have is the letter Yud which is the hand and the arm. And the letter Yud is the first letter of Yeshua's name. We know that Yeshua means salvation. And it's the number 10, which represents the 10 words. And we'll see in Colossians chapter 1, and in Genesis chapter 1, and in John chapter 1, how the Mashiach, Yeshua, has been there ever since the beginning, and that he's the creator, that he made the heavens and the earth and everything that's in them. Wow. Okay? And you can read these and go through these and study these, but I want to go down to the third letter, which is the Gimel, and the pictogram of the Gimel is a foot, and it means to lift or to lift the burden. It also means to walk. And the last letter we have is the letter Sheen, which is two teeth that means sharp or point or devour. And it also represents the two tablets. And it also represents Hashem. For the Jewish people, the letter Sheen represents Hashem. Mm -hmm. So, we'll go back to this foot and this burden here. And I'll have Angela start. Uh, what's, what's the burden that we have, Alan? Sin. Sin, right? Mm -hmm. And who lifts that burden? Yeshua. Yeshua is the it's one that lifts that burden. The burden bearer. And so, Angela, could you go ahead to 1 John chapter 1? And just go ahead and read chapter 1, because we're talking about a foot, and we're talking about lifting a burden, and actually, the foot is how we walk, right? Mm -hmm. And our walk in the Lord is called halakha, right? The way the way we walk, and that's supposed to be based on the ten words, right? Right. So go ahead and read First John chapter one, Angela. Okay. What was from the beginning? What we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was revealed, and we have seen and testify and declare to you the eternal life that was the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so you may have fellowship with us. Indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Yeshua the Messiah. These things we write so our joy may be full. Now this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you, 
that God mm -hmm. is light, and in mm -hmm. Him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him and keep walking in darkness, we are lying and do not practice the truth. <clears throat> but if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of His Son, Yeshua, purifies us from all sin. Mm -hmm. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we mm -hmm. confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. Okay, so in this scripture here in John chapter 1, what do we see? We see the burden is sin. We see that if we're in sin, we're walking in darkness. Mm -hmm. If we're walking in the light, that means we're walking in His Word and we're being obedient to His Word, right? Right. He's and it shows us here yes. that He's the one that lifts that burden. And what does He say about that burden? Uh, Leonardo, can you go ahead and read uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 to 30? At that time, Yeshua said in response, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and discerning and revealed them to infants. <clears throat> yes, Father, for this way was pleasing to you. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Make, take, uh, take my yoke upon. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, Alan, could you go ahead and read uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 to 25? Okay. 2, 21. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 to 25. Gotcha. Indeed, this is what you were called to, because the Messiah too suffered. On your behalf, leaving an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, nor was any deceit found on his lips. When he was insulted, he didn't retaliate with insults. When he suffered, he didn't threaten, but handed them over to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the stake so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you were healed. For you used to be like sheep gone astray, but now you have turned to the shepherd who watches over you. Amen. Okay. And Deborah, could you go ahead and read Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Okay. To the angel of the church at Sardis write, These are the ones of the one who holds the seven spirits of God, the seven stars. I know all your ways, that though you have a name for being alive, you are dead. Wake up and put some strength into what is left, which must otherwise die. For I have not found any work of yours completed in the eyes of my God. So remember the teaching you received, observe it and repent. If you do not wake up, I shall come upon you like a thief and you will not know the moment of my coming. Yet if you have a few persons in Sardis who have not polluted their clothing, they shall walk with me in white, for so they deserve. He who is victorious shall thus be robed all in white. His name I will never strike off the roll of the living, for in the presence of my Father and his angels I will acknowledge him as mine. Hear, you are our ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay, so it says, what? It says that you walk in you righteousness walk? and you walk and you're dressed in white, right? Robed mm -hmm. in white. Yeah. Okay. Angela, mm -hmm. go to Hebrews chapter 10. I'm Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. And just go ahead and read uh, from verse. <coughs> Start at verse three. 
ahead and read up to verse uh, 25. It's a long one, but go ahead. But in these sacrifices is a reminder of sins year after year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So when Messiah comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In whole burnt offerings and in sin offerings you did not delight. Then I said, Behold, I come to you. I come to do your will, O God, in the scroll of the book it is written of me. After saying above, sacrifices and offerings and whole burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor did you delight in them, those which are offered according to Torah. Then he said, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By his will we have been made holy through the offering of the body of Messiah Yeshua once for all. Indeed, every Kohen stands day by day serving and offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away our sins. But on the other hand, when this one offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from then on until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected forever those being made holy. The Ruach HaKodesh also testifies to us after saying, for us, for after saying, sorry, this is the covenant that I will cut with them after those days, says Adonai. I will put my Torah upon their hearts and upon their minds. I will write it. Then he says, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. And when there is removal of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have boldness to enter into the holy, the holies by the blood of Yeshua. He inaugurated a new and living way for us through the curtain that is his flesh. We also have a Kohen Gadol over God's household. So let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and body washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the unwavering confession of hope, for he who promises is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good deeds. How far? One more verse. One more. And do not neglect our own meetings, as is the habit of some, but encourage one another, and all the more so as you see the day approaching. As you see the day approaching. And we all know what that day is. We all know what that day is. Holy God. Okay, so Holy here God. in the pictograms of Vayagash, we see the suffering Messiah, Mashiach ben Yosef, we see the fulfillment of all of these prophecies, and we see how all these pictograms are actually fulfilled in the life of the Messiah, and we see how he lifts our burden of sin, how he gives us salvation, how he gives us eternal life. Uh, when we look at the Gematria, you have the number one, which is Hashem, the number three, which represents the triune nature of God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The number four is creation. The number six is man. Nine is judgment. And ten is the ten words. And so we have everything right here in the Gematria too. Because Yeshua is what? The judge. And his judgment is based on what? The ten words. And who does he judge? Man. He's also the creator of the heavens and the earth, that's in Colossians chapter 1, and in John chapter 1, he was there in the beginning. And so we see everything right in the pictograms on the Gematria. Mm -hmm. Now, as we start the Torah portion, Vayigashi drew near, this is talking about when Judah draws near to Joseph, right? We remember all of the brothers came, to Egypt, to 
come get more food. Right, Jacob managed, they managed to let Jacob, let Benjamin come with them. We know that last Torah portion, the cup was put in Benjamin's sack and that Benjamin was framed and they brought them all back to stand before Joseph. And we see another picture here about the foot and lifting burdens was that in all the land of Egypt, nobody could lift a hand or foot without Joseph's say so. Right? Joseph was mm -hmm. in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. So we'll see a tie in here to Joseph too, because we know that Joseph was persecuted too when he was sold into slavery by his brothers. And uh, we'll get into this picture now. We'll go into the Torah portion. Uh, let's start with Genesis chapter 44. Torah portion by Gosh. get started, we're going to read a little story real quick. Okay, we'll start out. Who are we up to now? Leonardo. Go ahead and read verses, uh, chapter 44, verse 18 through 23. Then Judah approached him and said, I beg your pardon, my lord. Please let your servant say a word in my lord's ear. And don't be angry with your servant, since you are like Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Do you have a father or a brother? So we said to my Lord, We have a father who is old. A child born to him of his old age is young. Now his brother is dead, so he is the only one of his mother's children left, and his father loves him. Then he said to your servants, Bring him down to me so that I can look at him, but we said to my Lord, The Lord cannot leave his father, for he, if he were to leave his father, he would die. Then you said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you won't see my face again. Oh, so here we come. Yeah. Okay, now we remember back in the Torah portion last week, they made a decision, right, wherever the object was found, that man would become Same. Joseph's slave, right? Mm -hmm. right? And that the rest of the brothers would be let go to return home, right? right. And that, that was the agreement that was made. Mm -hmm. And so now they're standing before Joseph. And this is a story of one of the things that was passed down. Now here Judah is begging Joseph Telling, telling him the whole story goes here. The tension was palpable. The confrontation inevitable. Twelve brothers faced each other and the stakes were no less than the future of the Jewish people. Judah approached the viceroy of Egypt, ready to appease him or do battle. Please allow me to say a few words in your ears because you are like Pharaoh. Basically, Judah was saying, I honor you like Pharaoh, but you are also a liar like Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And I am ready to take out my sword and finish you off, and mm -hmm. Pharaoh too. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's from Jasher, isn't it? <laughs> the viceroy replied, Jasher. The viceroy replied, if you take out your sword, I'll wring it around your neck. <laughs> Judah turned crimson with rage. What will we say to our old father? Tell him a wild animal came and ate him. <laughs> Just as you said when you sold your other brother. Hmm. Judah's chest hair stood on edge and burst through his shirt. Oh my. <laughs> he took a boulder in his hand and pulverized it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like Egypt to be destroyed? 
Let me stay instead of the lad Benjamin so that he can be returned to his father. I was the one who guaranteed his return. Your servant or father will die unless, when he sees Benjamin missing. The viceroy said, Why didn't you think of your father when you sold your other brother? Bring him here, and I will take him instead of Benjamin. I'm certain no one guaranteed his return. <laughs> the brothers were about to turn Egypt into a bloodbath. We already told you that our other brother is missing, they exclaimed. No, he isn't. He's right here in this room. It is I. <laughs> Upon hearing these words, the brothers looked around the room in every direction. Joseph, Joseph, son of Jacob, reveal yourself. The brothers were totally bewildered by this turn of events, and suddenly they heard the words, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, in Hebrew at that time. Right? Ani Yosef. Ani Hmm. That's that's the, the story. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Do you want to be in a Quran play? <laughs> I've been in all kinds of plays. <laughs> okay, Alan. What? Can you go ahead and read verse uh, 24 through 29? I think you signed up, Ken. 24 through 29. You did. I'm going to give you a part. Okay. It better we not went, be that one. We went up to your servant, my father, <laughs> and one. told him what my Lord had said. But when our father said, go again and buy us some food, we answered, we can't go down. Only if our youngest brother is with us will we go down because we can't see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Mm -hmm. Then your servant, my father, said to us, you know that my wife bore me two sons. The one went out from me and I said, surely he has been torn to pieces. And I haven't seen him since. Mm -hmm. Now if you take this one away from me too, and something happens to him, you will bring my gray hair down to Sheol with grief. So now, if I go to your servant, my father, and the boy isn't with us, seeing how his heart is bound up with the boy's heart, when he sees that the boy isn't with us, he will die. And your servants will bring the gray hair of your servant, our father, down to Sheol with grief. For your servant himself guaranteed his safety. I said, if I fail to bring him to you, then I will bear the blame before my father forever. Therefore, I beg you, let your servant stay as a slave to my Lord instead of the boy, and let the boy go up with his brothers. For how can I go up to my father if the boy isn't with me? I couldn't bear to see my father so overwhelmed by anguish. Okay. The life of parents. So, so who's this man, Judah? He's the fourth son. Oh. Yeah, but, but what did he do before? Oh. He, he was one of the ones that was involved when... Uh, Dinah? No? The, no. Well... Judah was involved in the whole thing when uh, right. when Joseph got sold, right? Yeah. Judah was there, right? Yeah. right. Sure he was. Yeah. Your brother he was part of it. Yeah. And so now he's going to try and rescue Benjamin, right? Mm -hmm. So does he volunteer himself? Yeah, Judah volunteers oh, himself yeah, yeah. to be the slave instead of Joseph, well, instead of Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that, that he brings Four, up 12. is like this. Judah says to Joseph, look, this is just Benjamin. I'm a lot stronger than Benjamin. Besides, you're calling Benjamin a thief. You want a thief to be your slave? That's, that's what Judah was saying. Mm -hmm. you know, well, he was trying to do anything he could to get out of leaving Benjamin there. Mm -hmm. So he said he would stay. Now, 
think he had some tissueva going on. Huh? He had some tissueva, tissueva going on. A lot of something going on. Yeah. Probably. And so now we come to Alan here. Your Although turn. Alan just wrote, we come to Debbie and we start chapter 45. Oh. And finally, <coughs> Joseph is going to break down here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and read verse uh, chapter 45. Verse uh, 1 through 11. Okay. Joseph could no longer control his feelings in front of his attendants, and he called out, Let everyone leave my presence. So there was nobody present when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. But so loudly did he weep that the Egyptians and Pharaoh's household heard him. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Can my father be still alive? His brothers are so dumbfounded at finding themselves face to face with Joseph that they could not answer. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer. So they came close. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be distressed or taken in this that you sold me into slavery here. It was God who sent me ahead of you to save men's lives. For there have now been two years of famine in the country, and there will be another five years with neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me ahead of you to ensure that you will have descendants on earth, and to preserve you all a great band of survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord over all his household and ruler of all Egypt. Make haste and go back to my father and give him this message from his son Joseph. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You will live in a land of Goshen and be near me. You, your sons and your grandsons, your flocks and herds and all that you have. I will take care of you there, you and your household and all that you have. And see that you are not reduced to poverty. There are still five years of famine to come. Okay. So what's he telling his Hurry brothers up, here? Hurry up, Dad. Glad to see you. <laughs> says there's five more years of famine, right? Yeah. And does he blame his brothers for what happened? No. Not at all. Got past it at the end of the day. God is in it to save life. Okay, so he is, uh, and he's, and what, what was the reason he did all of these things to his brothers? Why, why did he do all of this? For them to repent. They repented. Okay, the he, was, he was testing them to see if they'd done teshuva, right? If mm -hmm. they repented, if they turned from the ways that they were before. That's right. Because they sold him into slavery, but now they were willing to protect their brother Benjamin, right? And themselves be sold in slavery. And so they've made in a bad face, they've turned around from the way they were walking. And they found out Joseph was alive instead of... And now they found out that Joseph is alive. Right. They know there's five more years of famine. They know that, what, Joseph is there to protect them and take care of them and provide for all of them. Keep the family. And so it shows what, that Joseph forgave them for everything that happened because he saw that the whole situation was all part of God's plan. It was a God thing. It was God's it plan. To say. <laughs> and he says that they would be in the land of Goshen. Okay. And what was Goshen? All of Egypt. It no. Was, no, it the northern was part the, best. the Nile it Delta. Was the best was, it was actually the part of the best agricultural land in the whole land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they pastured their herds and their flocks. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things here that you'll run into is we know that all of uh, Jacob's children, what were they? They were all shepherds. Right. And the Egyptians detested the shepherds, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing was that Joseph didn't want any part of his family or part of the Jewish people to become part of the leadership in Egypt because he didn't want his people to be assimilated into the Egyptian culture.
He was trying to keep mm -hmm. all the Jewish people separate from the Egyptian culture. Mm -hmm. So if they remain shepherds and they all stay together, yeah, the and the Egyptians are board shepherds, yeah. then they would stay separated and they wouldn't be assimilated into the Egyptian culture. Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. And so, yeah, and so that's what Joseph tries to do here. Mm -hmm. He tries to keep them all separate. Okay, Angela, go ahead and read verse 12 through 15. Behold, your eyes see as do the eyes of my brother ben Benjamin, that it is my mouth that it is speaking to you. Therefore tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and all that you saw, but you must hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother's, his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Then he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. Afterwards his brothers conversed with him. Wow. And so the, what happens here? It's an emotional reunion. It's a big family reunion, right? Sure. Was. And they all weep with each other. They forgive each other. They all come together. You had a cry. Kissing and crying. And they all come together. And, and what happens here? Behold your eyes, see as do the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that is speaking to you. So here he is, the viceroy of all Egypt, right under the Pharaoh. And he's speaking to all the brothers in Hebrew, right? Mm -hmm. he is to, sh to show them, I'm Joseph. Right. And one of the things that Joseph does here before he sends his brothers back, according to the tradition, was that Joseph tells the brothers the last Torah portion that he studied with Jacob before he was sold into slavery so that, it, so that his father would know for sure that Joseph was really still alive. That would be a sign to Jacob that it really was Joseph. Oh, wow. I get the Torah portion. I get that. That's not in the scripture, it's oh. part of the part of the it's tradition. It's tradition oh, okay. by it works. It's part of the tradition. It was a sign to works. Jacob that he was really Joseph. Oh, about that. The other the other thing they say was that Joseph actually revealed himself and proved to his brothers that he was Joseph also by showing them the circumcision. And that's why he chased all of the other that's why he chased all of the other people out of the room and he was there alone with his brothers to, sh to show them that he was a son of the covenant and he said come near that's why he said come near so so they they could see so that's several of the things they talk about here okay and talking about the land of Goshen, uh, in chapter 45, verse 10, it's called uh, Kesan or Kesan. The Septuagint version calls it Kesan of Arabia. It was part of Egypt which bordered on Arabia. The same with the land of Ramses, according to Genesis 47, 11. It was reckoned to be in Arabia in which both the city of Heliopolis and the city of Heropolis were, according to Ptolemy. And it's in the land of Ramses, which agrees with Josephus. Okay, it was bounded by the Nile and by part of the Red Sea. That's on the west side, right? The Nile on the west. No, it's on, it's, it's, yeah. it's on the east. east. It says okay. here uh, that before this time, Joseph had a grant of this country from Pharaoh to dispose of at his pleasure. 
because he had so much power and authority as to put his father into it. It was also part of the domain of his father-in-law, the priest of Vaughan. And it was the uh, oh. metropolis, mm -hmm. part of Joseph's own country, where he had been with the daughter of the priest of Vaughan. It says, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, in Abraham's time, gave this land of Goshen to Sarah for an inheritance, and therefore the Israelites dwelt in it, because it was Sarah their mothers. This would account for Joseph's proposing to put them into this possession of it without leave of Pharaoh. But it also seems that Goshen was a grant from Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh agreed to Joseph's proposal. Says, uh, so there's a whole bunch of things yeah. right, right in that area there. Uh, and where was the Egyptian capital in those days? That's a good right, one. In the right, Delta? Right near there. Right near there, too? Okay. Was it Cairo, what we call it today? Well, they, they have... Uh, Not sure. Memphis was the royal seat. Memphis. Have you ever been to Tennessee? You know? Got this pyramid there. And it says here that where the Israelites dwelt was the seat of the nobility of the ancient Egyptians. So it was the seat of the nobility of the Egyptians. But it became the Israelites. Okay. So. Leonardo? Yes. Go ahead and read 16 to 20. When the, commotion, <clears throat> when the commotion was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers had, have come. It was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and his, and his servants. Hmm. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this. Lead your animals and go to your land of Canaan. Then get your father, your house, households, and come to me. I'll give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you, and you will, you will not, and you will eat the fat of the land. You are also commanded to say, "Do this: take for yourselves wagons from the land of Egypt for your little children and for your wives, and pick up your father and come." Don't be concerned about your goods because the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so Pharaoh hears, wow, all of Joseph's brothers are here. Well, he, the Pharaoh already knows what Joseph is like, right? Mm -hmm. And if the rest of the brothers are anything like Joseph, they'd be good to have around. They'd all be good to have around, right? <laughs> I mean, if one of them is this much of a blessing, how much of a blessing yeah, would the, the whole, whole family bunch. be, yeah. right? The whole bunch. Amen. Yeah. And the Pharaoh gives them what? The best of the land? Says, you don't even have to bring anything with you. I'll give you whatever you need. Hmm. Just come. Hmm. So he sends wagons and provisions and all kinds of things. And by the way, at this time when they were talking about Benjamin, they said that when Benjamin went with his brothers, he left ten sons behind. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yep, wow. Benjamin time. had ten sons. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right. Okay, so Pharaoh, Pharaoh heard the news and he was glad, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Alan. Go ahead and read verse uh, 21 to the end of the chapter there. Okay. The sons of Israel acted accordingly, and Yosef gave them wagons, as Pharaoh had ordered, and gave them provisions for their journey. To each of them he gave a set of new clothes, but to Benjamin he gave seven and a half pounds of silver and five sets of new clothes. Likewise, to his father he sent ten donkeys loaded with the finest goods Egypt produced, 
as well as ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and food for his father to eat on the return journey. Thus he sent his brothers on their way, and they left. He said to them, Don't quarrel among yourselves while you're traveling. <laughs> so they went up out of Egypt, entered the land of Canaan, and came to Yaakov their father. They told him, Yosef is still alive. He's ruler over the whole land of Egypt. He was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe them. So they reported to him everything Yosef had said to them. But it was only when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him that the spirit of Yaakov, their father, began to revive. Mm -hmm. Israel said, Enough! My son, Yosef, is still alive! I must go and see him before I die. Ah. So he's going to go see Joseph. It's like he was raised from the dead, to say the least. Before he dies. Wow. Enough? Mm. Makes you think of Yeshua, doesn't it? It does. David was so miserable when he died, they thought that was it. They were just hungry. Right. And this man spent years and years and years crying for the son. Look at him out there. You have a son you don't see anymore. Yeah, I don't want you to hear him. Writing him off. I don't think he's him off. He's on Facebook. So there's a lot of things in here, right? Yeah. But it talks about that he gave things to all his brothers. Things? What things? Oh, clothes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And silver. And five times the amount of food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And good and things, food. food. So, it says here that he gives them what? Garments to change that every one of his brothers, that they might have something to show their father and to their wives which would cause them to give credit to the report that Joseph was still alive. Okay, he gave to Benjamin, says, 300 pieces of silver or shekels, which they say here amounted to between 30 and 40 pounds of their money. And he gave Benjamin five changes of raiment. So he gave Benjamin more than he gave all the other brothers. He did. Yeah. And some people would think that that would cause a problem. Didn't for some reason. But no, they've been through. Yeah, that's what I mean. Was he still Because he's showing favoritism to Benjamin, but it doesn't because the brothers I mean, understood what was going on. Right. He could have shared some of that and what happens here is Joseph's revealed himself and uh, like I said the brothers have gone back to Jacob and they were afraid actually to go directly to Jacob and this is a story here. They're afraid to go back directly to Jacob and tell Jacob that Joseph was still alive because it would be too much of a shock. Mm -hmm. They always worry about older people. Like, Don't tell so and so they're so old. And so just... this, so this is what he did. When you've only been through so much, what's another? Yeah, <laughs> get used to it. Okay. Sure do. So the returning brothers had a dilemma. How could they gently present the aging Jacob with? This astounding news. Such tidings would excite him so much that it could cause a heart attack. <laughs> with this in mind, with this in mind, they decided to have a little girl named Sirach, the daughter of Asher, play the harp and sing a song to her grandfather Jacob. The song was to sing to Jacob. Joseph is still alive. Joseph is still alive. Yeah. And when little Sirach sang these songs, yeah. sang these words, and Jacob understood their meaning, he almost collapsed. But the gentleness of her singing softened the shock, and he was able to calm down. 
Because of this, Sirach was given the blessing of longevity. And of all of the children, she was the only one to go down to J Egypt with Jacob and ascend out of Egypt 210 years later with Moses. Mm. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Mm. Wow. Too bad that's not in the Bible. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's part of the part of the tradition. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in Jasher too. Okay. And, and so. No, that's yeah. why I'm like, they, I'm they go curious. back it's to Canaan. It's in there. They, they go back to Canaan, and they go and get Jacob. Can I they tell you? Load up all the wagons. Go ahead, Alan. Can I tell you a funny story on the yeah. lines of. Go ahead. Well, there was this old gentleman who just came into a wealth of money through inheritance, and he inherited $5 million, but he's way, way old, okay? And they're afraid if they tell him real suddenly that he just inherited, he'd die of a heart attack. So they asked his pastor and said, Pastor, can you break the news to him? He said, well, let's see what I can do. And he said, uh, tell you what, call him Joe. Joe, if you ever did inherit a lot of money, you know what you do with it? Yeah, I'd give half it to my pastor. And then after they pick the pastor up after he died, they had to Funny person so now, to tell me So story. now Joseph is on the way. Okay? <laughs> Joseph sent all his brothers back to the land of Canaan to pick up Jacob, right? Right. Okay, we're on chapter 46 now. Yep. Okay, Deb, go ahead and read chapter 46, 1 through 7. Okay. So Israel set out with all that he had and came to Beersheba, where he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. God said to Israel in a vision by night, Jacob, Jacob, and he answered, I am here. God said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you a great nation. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I myself will bring you back again without fail, and Joseph shall close your eyes. So Jacob set out from Beersheba. Israel's sons conveyed their father Jacob, their dependents and their wives, in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry them. He took the herds and the stock which they had acquired in Canaan and came to Egypt. Jacob and all his descendants with him, his sons and their sons, his daughters with the sons' daughters, he brought all his descendants to Egypt. Okay. Yep. And how many of them are there? Seven. Seventy. Uh, what does it say? Read the names. <laughs> and what did it say about the seventy? that the uh, 70 nations are numbered after the children of Israel, right? Right. The 70 nations. Oh, wow. That's the 70 that go down to Egypt. Right. Well, and Yeshua sent them out. He sent out the 70. He did. He got cast out. He sends out the 70. The Bible's yeah. introducing Seven. Okay. Seven times 10. Now, the, the, other, the other thing about this they is that and and if you remember, Jacob, Jacob was separated from Isaac for how long? 17 years. 22 years. And how long was he separated? How long was Jacob separated from Joseph? The same amount of time. What do you have there, Angela? Oh, what? 22, I don't have huh? No, you don't have anything. Okay. So there's 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 a lot in here. Okay, so he, what does he tell? What does God tell Jacob? That Joseph is the one that's going to close his eyes, right? Mm -hmm. And he told him not to worry. Not to worry. Go down to Egypt. He would die worry. peacefully. <laughs> yeah. And so now we come. And we have the names of all the people that come down to Egypt. Angela, go ahead and start it. Okay. Verse 8. eight. And go ahead and read through. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of names. I guess
guess through 16. We'll split this up. Now these are the names of the children of Israel who were coming to Egypt, Jacob and his children, Jacob's firstborn, Reuben, Reuben's son, Han Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, Simeon's sons, Jamul, Yamin, Ohad, Yakin, Zohar, and Shaul, son of the Canaanite woman. Levi's sons, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Judah's sons, Er, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan, and Perez's sons were Hezron and Hamul. Is Issachar's sons, Tola, Puva, um, Yov. Yov, and Shimron. Zebulun's sons were Sered, Elan, and Yahiel. These are the sons of Leah, whom she born to Jacob in Padan Haram. In addition to Dinah, his daughter, all the people, his sons and daughters, number 33. Hmm. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay. okay. Uh, Leonardo, could you read from uh, 16 through... Uh, 27. Yes, thank you. As <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Gadson. You can do it. Zipion, Haggai, Shemuna, Hezbon, Eri, Aroda, and Arili, or Arili, mm -hmm. uh, Asher's sons, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, Bariah, Zara, their sister, Bariah's sons, Heber and Michael. These are the sons of Zephath, whom Laban gave to Leah, his uh, daughter. She bore these to Jacob, 16 people, the sons of Jacob's wife, Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph in the land of Egypt. Ashnath, the daughter of Potipharia, priest of On, bore them to him. Benjamin's sons, Bela, Beker, Ashbel, Gerah, Ger, Naaman, Eli, Rosh, Mapim, Hapim, and Ard. These are Rachel's sons who were born to Jacob, the tally of all the people. 14. The sons of Dan, Hashem, uh, Naphtali's sons, Yaxel, Guni, Yazer, and uh, Shalem. These are the sons of Bala, whom Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, and she bore those to Jacob. The tally of all these people were seven. All the people belonging to Jacob who went to Egypt, those coming from his loins, not counting the wives of Jacob's sons, the tally of all the people were 66. The sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt was a tally of two people. The tally of all the people belonging to Jacob's household who came to Egypt was 70. Now he sent Judah before him to Joseph to show him the way to Goshen. Then they came to the land of Goshen. Joseph harassed harnessed his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. As soon as he appeared before him, he fell upon his neck and wept on his neck for some time. Then Israel said to Joseph, At this time I am ready to die after seeing your face in person, for you're still alive. Okay, stop there. So, so what does he do now? He sends Judah ahead of him to Joseph to what? To prepare road. ahead of him in Goshen. Yeah. And they say actually what Judah was sent to prepare was a yeshiva. Mm -hmm. Because they had to have a house of study Jason, yeah. to study in before they went any place. <laughs> and so Judah's task was to set up a yeshiva, a house of study where they could study God's Word 
that everything would be prepared when the family arrived. So it was written at this time? Well, you have oral things that were passed down. We know right. that Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel knew what kind of sacrifices to make, right? What mm -hmm. they were supposed to do. Right. We know Noah knew what he was supposed to do, right? We know that all the patriarchs knew what sacrifices they were supposed to make, right? And they were telling each other, they didn't run it down here. Yeah. And, and so, we know that Moses wrote the Torah. Yeah, we know that Moses wrote the Torah that was given to him by God. Um, there may have been things in writing previous to that that we don't know about. And there were also a lot of things passed down orally, right? right? Oral tradition passed down from father to son all the way down. We also know that there weren't a whole lot of uh, people to go through to go from Adam and Eve down to Abraham, right? Because right. you go from Adam to Methuselah nice to Noah To Abraham, I mean, you, you, you can go through, it. it's only going through maybe four people, all the way down to the time of Abraham. I tend to remember what your relatives told you, your right. parents, your grandparents. You know, it's not, it's, it's not like it's, 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 I told you so. it's not like it's going through a chain of a hundred different people. Well, it's not people. a telegram chain, like parents the game. did. <laughs> yeah. No. Right. Uh -oh. And everything and everything had to be exact. Yeah. And how were the children yeah. taught today? They sing the Torah, right? That's a, the easiest the easiest way to memorize the easiest way to memorize anything is to sing it. I have a cute little video of this class that we got to visit and they're doing a study and they're all doing it in song. It's cool. It's all songs, right? Yeah, I have right? a, a video of it. Yeah. And you then, can and look that's it up on the internet. Teach. It's something called Tor, Tor, Tor. They have the whole thing done yeah. in singing. Oh, and that's, that's cool. And that's how they you teach Tor, is you sing it. I missed that. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why the psalms are written. And that's all the psalms. Mm -hmm. Musical notation. And you remember better. Yeah, is that, I guess that's kind of how a canter got started then, huh? In the yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, the whole, the whole Torah is sung or chanted. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, there's several different websites on the internet where you can actually go on the internet and listen and listen to each Torah portion being chanted. Yeah. And they and they do it all, there's all different rules of cantillation, yeah. how the, how the different... Yeah. How the different words are supposed to be sung. Okay, so now they've all come down to Egypt. Jacob's back with Joseph. Yeah. They have a big reunion. They cry, they cry. A lot of crying in there. And now we come, uh, who are we up to now? It's good then. Oh, yeah. Alan, go ahead and read 31 to the end of the chapter. Yosef said to his brothers and his father's family, I'm going up to tell Pharaoh. I'll say to him, My brothers and my father's family who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds and keepers of livestock. They have brought their flocks, their herds, and all their possessions. Now when Pharaoh summons you and asks, What is your occupation? Tell him. Your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth until now, both we and our ancestors. This will ensure that you will live in the land of Goshen, for any shepherd is abhorrent to the Egyptians. Ah. And so this is the way Joseph uses to separate the children of Israel, like I said before, from the Egyptians, 
so that the Jewish people, the Israelites, don't intermingle with the Egyptians. They're kept totally separate, mm -hmm. and there's no crossover between the two cultures. There's no assimilation. Mm -hmm. right. There's no connection between them at all. So that was Joseph's recommendation to them, right? Just tell them your shepherds, and I'll say, ah, get out of it, get away from me. Get away from me. Never have raw wool. And who did the angels come to to announce the birth of Yeshua? Okay. Every everybody that's been important in the Bible has been a shepherd, right? Yeah. Seems like it. Yeah. Because Yeshua is the chief shepherd. David was a shepherd, Moses was a shepherd, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were yeah. shepherds. Yeah. Must be some kind of training that is all that, the way through. Yeah, some uh, well, the way, being a shepherd. The way Hashem looks at it is if you do a good job of taking care of the sheep and caring for the sheep then I can give you more responsibility. If you can't take good care of the sheep, then you can't take good care of my people. People like our sheep. They're all the same sheep. way with the four, five, and the three, and the one. Give him five cities, mm -hmm. and you come back and you give him a whole bunch of cities. Mm -hmm. Give him two cities, and you give him four cities. Mm -hmm. One city, mm -hmm. one says what? It says that he would give a person a responsibility, mm -hmm. and if they handled that responsibility mm -hmm. correctly, they were given more responsibility, right? More reward. And that's how it is in the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's how it works. Yeah. We and so, thing. when he gave the talents to the different people, what did he do? He gave one one talent, he gave one two talents, and the other one five talents. And the one with the one talent took the money and didn't do nothing with it, and so we lost it, right? Said, so give it to the one that has ten, right? Because the one that had five turned it into ten. And the other one with two got some more, and so... There's a lesson here about delegation. Delegation of so what authority the and how responsibility. To delegate, doesn't matter how many it is, because you're unselfish and it's not yours. You're right. just a chief steward right. having the main responsibility to see that the master gets his due. Right. We do that a whole lot and today. So that's the same with thing our, that Joseph did. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. In fact, Joseph in Egypt was basically the steward. Mm -hmm. He took and all he of the things in. Room. Right. But he didn't do it for himself. He no, did it for the benefit of everybody as else. Said, to save life. God sent me ahead of you to save, save you life. life. And that's why we are here. We are to go in Yeshua's name to save life. To Born save life. To the old rugged cross. Okay, so we're here what? To preserve life. To save life. Right. What's the greatest commandment? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind. Right. Second is like uh, to, to love, love your neighbor yourself. as yourself. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, what's that mean? You're you preserve his life. Right? You're going to preach the gospel. You preserve his life, your neighbor's in. life. Amen. And so in the mitzvot, that commandment supersedes all the other ones is to preserve life. Okay, so who are we up to now? Okay, let me start with chapter 47, verse 1 through 4. Joseph came and told Pharaoh, My father and my brothers have arrived from Canaan, with their flocks and their cattle, and all that they have. And they are now in Goshen. And he chose five of his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh, who asked them what their occupation was. And they answered, My lord, we are shepherds, we and our fathers before us. And we have come to stay in this land, for there is no pasture in Canaan for our sheep, because the famine is so severe. We beg you, my lord, to let us settle now in Goshen. 
Pharaoh said to Joseph, So your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is yours. Settle them in the best part of it. Let them live in Goshen, and if you know of any capable men among them, make the chief herdsman over my cattle. Amen. Okay, so what did they do? He wanted them to be put in charge of Pharaoh's cattle too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh knew he had a good thing. Huh? He knew he had a good thing. Yeah. Right. He knew he had people that knew what they were doing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That knew how to take care of cattle. And we're talking about he knew, sheep, he knew, goats, and cows, and bulls, and yeah. oxen. And he knew there wasn't anybody. Donkeys. He knew there wasn't anybody in Egypt that could do it because it says a few verses before that that shepherds were abhorrent to the Egyptians, right? Right. They didn't want to do such a menial but, job. But didn't they? They, didn't want, they didn't want to do that job. We could get them a sofa. But didn't there. they have cows <laughs> and goats? And donkeys and camels. Yeah, they did. Yeah, those two. Yeah, but once they once the famine got really going, they didn't. <laughs> oh, and that was abhorrent to uh, take care of any kind of husbandry, animal life. It was too low for them to do it. They, they probably had slaves. Yeah, they had all kinds like of slaves in Egypt. Animals. They used to have. And then they, <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm slaves. referencing the chicken plant. Then the slaves got <laughs> elevated to the Really? They have big heads, you know? They See, people. There, were slaves, there, were slaves, slaves, okay. there were slaves in Egypt before the, the Israelites the were made. That's slaves. right. And they all got reduced the to the same, thing, the high, brought down, and, like and the sheepies. low got exalted. Because you remember, if you remember, when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt later on down the road here, they yeah. had some flocks. The, the Egyptians were all yelling, wait a minute, if we let these people go, we won't have anybody to do all our work all right, for us. Right. Tough right. Yeah. Well, they chased after him again. So he chased after him. Big mistake. They were going all around and they don't have cans of rabbit traps. And so yeah. now, Pharaoh has them go to the best part of the land of Egypt, to Goshen, to pasture the flocks and take care of his flocks, too. Mm -hmm. And now Joseph is going to present his family to the Pharaoh. And who are we up to now? Angela. So, uh, go ahead and read verse uh, 7 through 12. Then Joseph brought Jacob his father and presented him to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many are the days of the years of your life? Jacob answered Pharaoh, The days of the years of my sojourns have been a hundred and thirty years. Few and bad have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not reached the lifespans of my forefathers in the days of their sojourns. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and left Pharaoh's presence. So Joseph settled his father and his brothers, and he gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best part of the land, in the region of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Joseph sustained his father and his brothers and all of his father's household with food according to the children. Did you say 12 or 17? Hmm? I forgot. 12? Right. So, say 11. Oh, sorry, I heard one more. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> that's okay. So you stopped at 10? Was, when I stopped at 12. It was okay. free. It was free. It was so free. Joseph settled his father and his brothers, and he gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the like best part of the land, in the region of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Such a deal. Okay, so how old was Jacob here? 130. 130. 130 years old. Yeah, and how long did he actually live? Well, he lived some more. A little about more 137. Than that. Yeah. He lives some more because he's going to be with Joseph for some time now. Yeah. He had a lot of talking to catch up on. Mm -hmm. A lot of talking. He had a lot of news to catch up on. A lot of news to catch up on. Yeah. Yeah. Family people you haven't seen in years, boy, you're going to talk about it. Right? But his <laughs> grandsons are probably already born, aren't they? When oh, they yeah. Get over there. 
Your the two boys. Yeah. 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 So Jacob is 130 years old, and he blesses Pharaoh. Now, how long did the people in Egypt usually live to be? How we don't old? Know. Don't know. Don't know. Huh? Not very long. Was Not it? very long, really, was they it? had such sickness and disease. They All played. kinds of sickness and disease. Yeah. Warfare. And problems. Strife, civil unrest. Yeah. Okay. Why have politics coming? You know, maybe, maybe uh, Pharaoh be, was aware of the blessing that those that bless Israel are blessed and those that curse Israel is cursed. He has so to when that. That's why he was glad to see him there, and that's why he wanted him to take care of his cattle or whatever. So, well, you have to remember yeah. that, that there were uh, people that went down to Egypt before, weren't there? Mm -hmm. White patriarchs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They right. went down to Egypt and went back. They did. Right. They made a good reputation yep. for back then. Yeah. And so there were Israelites down in Egypt before that, right? Right. right. The patriarchs were. Sure were. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Leonardo, go ahead and read verse 12 to 15. I read 12, though. Can you read 12 again? Yeah. So, Joseph uh, supported his father and his brothers and his father's entire household with food for the mouths of the little ones. Now there was no there was no food food in all the land because the famine was very severe. Both the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished because of the famine. Joseph collected all the money that could be found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain that they bought and Joseph brought brought the money into Pharaoh's house. Then the money of the land of Egypt and of the land of Canaan ran out, and all of Egypt came to Joseph, saying, Give us food. Why should we die in front of you because the money is gone? Hmm. So how bad was the famine? Severe. Bad enough now that there was no money in all the land of Egypt or in all the land of Canaan. And what did Joseph do? He collected everybody's money that they spent on grain mm -hmm. and brought it all to Pharaoh's palace. Right? Mm -hmm. Pharaoh was a pretty rich man by this time, huh? <laughs> all the money oh, in yeah. Egypt and Canaan. It's not a fun way to do it, though, I'll tell you. And that's what they the leave when Moses goes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. So yeah. all the money from Canaan and Egypt and the other lands from around there all went to buy grain. And the people come to Joseph and say, give us bread. Why should we die in your presence? They don't have any more money left now. Mm -hmm. right. And so what does Joseph do? Sell us your cattle. Sell well, let's see, Alan. Go ahead and read verse uh, 16 yeah. and 17. 16 and 17, okay. Yosef replied, Give me your livestock. If you don't have money, I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. Mm -hmm. So they brought Yosef their livestock, and Yosef gave them food in exchange for the horses, flocks, cattle, and donkeys. All that year he provided them with food in exchange for all their livestock. Mm. Okay, so he fed them for a year for their livestock. Mm. So now they have no money and they have no, no livestock. Animals. So now we're three years into yeah. the famine. Mm -hmm. uh. yeah. Okay, so now money. Joseph's what? He's collected all the money all and all the animals. Mm. Yeah. And he fed the people for a year. Right. Okay, Debbie? Go ahead and read uh, verse 18 and 19. The year came to an end, and the following year they came to him again and said, My Lord, we cannot conceal it from you. Our silver is all gone, and our herds of cattle are yours. 
Nothing is left for your lordship but our bodies and our lands. Why should we perish before your eyes, we and our land as well? Take us in our land in payment for bread, and we and our land alike will be in bondage to Pharaoh. Hmm. Well, you say, and provide seeds so that we may live and not die, and the land will not become desolate. Okay. And this was why... I'm doing it again, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. And this was why, though, that Joseph... See how said in the beginning the what? Mm -hmm. He set up the granaries yeah. and the big cities. He had all of the people move to, to the metropolitan areas oh, okay. so that the people wouldn't have to travel to get food. Mm -hmm. right? He knew yeah, there was a famine, so they wouldn't be able to plant or work the crops or harvest any crops. So he had all of the people all close together near where the granaries were so people didn't have to travel. Mm -hmm. Use some common sense, right? Get everybody all close together. Kenny, that's the bottom. Give us the seed corn. That's what you're supposed yep. to use the seed for planting next year. Yep. If you eat that, you really got nothing. Yep. And so... Because you have to save some back. And so Joseph provides for them again for another year. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they become serfs to Pharaoh. The land is Pharaoh's. Right. The money's Pharaoh's. The people of Pharaoh's. Year four. The land of Everything's more. gone. Three more years to go. Everything's gone. So, it's going. Yeah. Okay, Angela, verse 20 and through 22. Thus Joseph acquired all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for every Egyptian sold his field because the famine had overwhelmed them, and the land became Pharaoh's. As for the nation, he resettled it by cities, from one end of Egypt's borders to the other. Only the land of the priest he did not buy, since the priest had a stipend, stipend sorry, um, from Pharaoh, and they lived off their stipend that Pharaoh had given them. Therefore, they did not sell their land. Okay, so Pharaoh's priests kept their land. Hmm. That's interesting. But everybody else's yeah, land. Yeah, that's a pagan priest, isn't that? Everybody what else's contrast. land was gone. Yeah. Huh? What a contrast! In heathenism, priests are the only ones having land, yeah. and in God's economy, priests don't get any land or any inheritance. Well, they don't have an inheritance. They had their Levitical cities. Yeah. But scattered all throughout the land. They, they had, ministry. but it was amongst the tribes to their brothers. Yeah. And now, they, why they do you think that's the case? Yeah. Do you have any idea why? Well, because uh, because they were supposed things. to teach all the people. Mm -hmm. Right. They were to be undistracted from the worldly things. Okay, Debbie. What? Okay, who are we up to? Leonardo. Leonardo. Verse 23 to 24. 23 and 24. Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, I have brought you and your land today for Pharaoh. Here is seed for you so that you can sow the land. During the uh, harvest, you must give a fifth part to Pharaoh, and four fifths will be for you, for seed for the field and for your, flood, for your food, and for those in your house, and for food for your little ones. Okay. So what does he do now? He's taken all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, and he tells them they're basically like vassals now, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to work the land, they're going to work the land for Pharaoh, and... According to what Joseph says here, when you do the harvest, you keep 80%, the other 20% is Pharaoh's. That's pretty generous overall. Yeah, but they don't have any land anymore. 2080, but they don't own anything anymore. It's all Pharaoh's land. Okay, so slaves. what they have now 
is they get to keep 80% of the harvest. Some of it they save for seed to plant the next year, and the rest of it they can eat. So basically, they're just working to feed themselves. Yeah, yeah. they're working to feed themselves, pretty they're much. Barely scraping by. Just like the serfs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Crop sharers. Sharecroppers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, in fact, I heard, well, I'll t tell you after, after we're done here. Okay. We've the people in TV land okay. guessing. Now, who are we up to now? <laughs> Alan. Okay. Go ahead That's and finish the chapter. Okay. Okay. They replied, You have saved our lives. So if it pleases my Lord, we will be Pharaoh's slaves. Yosef made it a law for the country of Egypt, valid to this day, that Pharaoh should have 20%. Only the property belonging to the priests did not become Pharaoh's. Israel lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. They acquired possessions in it and were productive, and their numbers multiplied greatly. And their numbers multiplied greatly. Lived there how many years? Wow. So he lived there 17 years, and then who, he died. Who? Okay, that's so Jacob. 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 Lived. Jacob. And you live to be 147 to answer my own yeah. question. Yeah. So that answers your other question. Yes, it does. 147. And so Jacob came back, right? Mm -hmm. Jacob went from Canaan down mm -hmm. to Egypt, was reunited with Joseph. And 17 more years. For 17 more years. Exactly the amount of time he got to know him from birth till the time he sold into slavery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Joseph yeah. was 17. Did you catch that? Yeah. Did you catch that? Yeah, he told yep. us that last year. He was, he he was 17 years old when he got sold into <laughs> wow. slavery. And, ding, 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 ding. And Jacob yeah, gets another like 17 years at the end. <laughs> okay. And so now uh -huh. we have the children of Israel are all in the land of Egypt. And Joseph's providing for his whole entire family. Mm -hmm. And so he's provided, what? Salvation mm -hmm. for his family mm -hmm. and for all the other nations all of the world. world. Yes, for all the world because of the famine. Okay.